Good morning. Welcome. Hello, hello. My name is Christy Dennis. I am one of your Miami technology trainers. We do work with the Miami Association of Realtors. I am a part of three. So if you took new member orientation, you might have met one of my fellow colleagues and favorite trainers, Connie Nieto. We also have another trainer. You might have taken maybe a matrix class with him. His name is Tyson Haynes. Right. And then again, my name is Christy Dennis. In today's class, we're going to be going over the CMA and the process of the CMA. Now, the beginning of this class, we'll go through where you can find some statistics, how you can create a CMA on Matrix, and we're also going to take a quick look into IMAP. But the second part of the class is where the special part comes in. We do have a guest speaker, right? And if you'd like to turn slightly, he is all the way in the back, Mr. George Jalil. Thank you for being with us today. He might, you might recognize him. He's been in the industry for over 40 years in the real estate industry. He's also held many titles in real estate with associations like the Miami Association of Realtors, Florida Realtors, and NAR. And I will fully present him um, when he comes up, but you will have the perspective of an appraiser. And that makes this class very, very powerful. So let's go ahead and jump into it so we can get to the exciting second part with George. We're going to get started on MiamiRealtor.com. And before I move forward, you guys will have this recording available. You're also going to have the PowerPoint available. So if you just want to relax and enjoy the class and absorb and not worry about taking notes, you can do that, okay? We're going to get started on MiamiRealtor.com. Before you create a CMA, we want to know what our market looks like. And we're going to take a look at that right from MiamiRealtor.com. The association every month creates stats for you. So right at the top, it says stats. We're going to give that a click. And that's going to open you up into different statistics based on county. It's also going to divide your single family homes with your condos and your townhomes. I'm gonna scroll through here. Excellent for us as agents, readily available and done for you. You have Miami-Dade, we can click on the tab for Broward County. You have Palm Beach, Martin and St. Lucie available. As I move through this screen in the blue, what you have is your single family homes. And if we keep going towards the bottom, we have those condos and those townhomes available. So let's take a look at some of those interesting statistics that we want to keep our eye on before we start pricing properties. If we're looking at Broward County, so I went ahead and I tracked off Broward County, some of those stocks that we wanna look at is the median sales price in the area. You're looking at 600,000. It's okay, take a seat. If you want to take a look at how it's changed between this year and last year, they have the percentage of change all the way to the right. And it has stabilized at 600,000. As we move through here, you also have the percentage of original list price received. What does that mean? That means that sellers are receiving 98% of what they're asking for. So is this a time to lowball your sellers, right? No, it's not. They're receiving what they're asking for. Back in July 2022, they're receiving on average 100% of what they were asking for. Another great stat that you want to take a look at is the median time to contract. So how long is it taking those properties um, to go from active to pending, you're looking at 20 days. Now, 20 days is still very competitive compared to last year, though, you had even less time at 13 days. So those buyers do need to be decisive. Now, as we move through here, there's another one that I want to take a look at, and that's going to be the median time to sell, right? You're looking at 61 days compared to last year at 51. We're going to move down to the month supply of inventory and it tells 2.8. What does that mean? That means that my that Broward County, if we were not to receive another single family listing, we would be done selling our inventory based on the rate that we are selling property in 2.8 months. Is that a long time? No, it's not, right? And that those are all um, statistics that you're going to look at that points you into a very solid seller market. So another little stat I want you guys to look at is up at the top, and that is the paid, uh, percentage paid in cash. You're looking at 25.6 months. 
So a quarter of these individuals are buying these single family homes cash. They got their little briefcase. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can figure out where those people are, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly they're in Broward, they're buying here. All right, let's take a look at our townhomes and condos now that we're a little familiar with those stats. You're looking at the percentage paid in cash, that's almost 50% are paid in cash. That median sales price is 280,000. Those sellers are receiving 97% of what their original list price is. Median time to contract, you're looking at 26 days. Time to close, you're looking at 66. Months of inventory, you're looking at 3.5. So it's a lot of great info that you readily have available anytime you click on that stats button. And this is awesome for us, but what if you wanna include this in a CMA? or you want to share with a customer, what you can do is you can scroll down to the bottom. And I have three for you. My favorite one is going to be the detailed report, but I'm kind of a nerd like that. I do love a good detail, but you do have it as a summary report as well. And for those of you who are active on social media, who's on social media? Everybody. <laughs> Better question. Who's not on social media? <laughs> and if you're not, we do have a social media series for you. So as I move through here, what I'm going to look for is Broward County. Right. We found Broward County here. We have it divided into townhomes and single families. So if I'm presenting a single family, I'm going to take a look at Broward County single family homes. That's going to open up for me and you have a really great flyer that's available for you. You have additional information that you can share easily available on the top right hand corner. You can download, you can print. You have not only the median sales price in the area, but you have the average. And as I move through here, you also have trends. So if they're looking to see how that market has changed, you go back from 2019 to 2023, offering them information regarding closed sales, median sales price, inventory in the market, as well as additional sales that are happening that are not your traditional. You have your foreclosure REOs, July 2023. You had seven closed foreclosures. Is that a big number? No, it's a very low number. And it's not to say that that is the extent, right? That is what is available. If we check on the MLS, those are still low, but we do have options to review the whole picture in IMAP, which is another great class working with investors. As I move through here, we also have our short sales listed, zero. And then you have that trajectory comparing traditional foreclosures and short sales. Did you guys like this? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I think this is awesome. You can pull it. It's available. And I have another tip for you. At the bottom of these pages, the association marks, and it says here that on Tuesday, August 22nd, is when this data was pulled. And it'll also let you know that September 21st, you can come back here for fresh data. So you already know when do I have to come back. All right. Yes, ma'am. By county, it's not by zip code. In this case, you have it available by county. Yeah. You know, you do have programs that are available by zip code. Um, a really great one would be Sunstats, which is also available on your dashboard if you want to write that down. And those infographics are wonderful. So I'm going to go back into South Florida Market Stats. And now we're going to look at my favorite. Um, and I like it for a few reasons. And that's going to be right next to the summary report. It's called the detailed report. I'm going to move down and I'm going to pick Broward Single Family again. And it's a very similar report, but this is 10 pages. And if you've never discussed statistics with a customer, this is a great hack. <laughs> Why? Because it includes something called an economist note. So I'm going to move through here. And it'll say, okay, close sales. And then within close sales, what does the economist know? This is a great shortcut. So you have amazing talking points with a customer. It's also a quick, easy read that you can absorb in just a few minutes. So you can maybe provide, right, the initial report and keep the details for yourself. Or if you have that type of person, your customer is like a me, you can provide this to them as well. Okay.
So for example, you've got cash sales. Why do we have to look at that? Why do you need to know about statistics? That's what helps you build trust with your customer. So these are very, very important. Now for our social media users, which is all of you, let me go ahead and close this out. On the right hand side, same page, you got a few ways that you can share these stats. Here's the market snapshot infographic. I'm going to give that a little click. You've got a video that you can share, a video that you can watch, and that'll keep you up to date with your market within a minute. And then on the right hand side, you also have it available as a PDF that you can print and a JPEG. Let's open one of these up so you can take a look at what they look like because they look great. Let's see, we've got all of our counties listed. And what is that shaped perfectly for? A story. That's a great story post that's perfect on LinkedIn, on Instagram, et cetera, that you can share this info with. We happy so far? Nice. All right. So let's jump into Matrix. We're going to click on Home and we're going to move into our Matrix system. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to click on that Miami Gateway. It's going to ask you for your username and your password, and that's going to present for you all of your products and services that are available. In today's class, I'm going to jump into Matrix. So I'm going to click on that icon, and we are going to start with a search. So I'm going to search RE1, RE2. Now, the first step I'm going to do before I deep dive into a CMA is I'm going to see if it's been listed on the MLS. Does anybody know how long properties are available on the MLS? Yes, ma'am. She knows 10 years. They're available for 10 years. So if that property has not been listed within the last 10 years, it will not be available. But I have another tip for you, so not to worry. But let's just check if it is, because if it has been, then we get some insight. What does it look like, right? So let's uncheck active to make sure that we are looking at all properties that have been available that are single family. Now, to do an initial search, I'm going to use this search towards the middle. Street number, street direction, street name. And I'm going to start to type that in. One, two, five, two, five, northeast, first Ave. Now, if I type in first, I have one match so far. So I, my tip is don't add first, don't add av, don't add terrace, don't add any of that. You want to stay as simple as possible. And we now have three matches. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. And this is the beginning of the research on this property. So we can see that it has been listed multiple times. When a property has been listed multiple times, the property that has recently been sold is always going to be towards the top, right? That's the newest property. And as I'm reviewing, I can actually see how it's evolved here. So I can add in an additional column, insert column, and let's put in the close date. And I'm going to click on apply. And I can see, all right, they sold it in 2011, 2012, and then again in 2018. And we can see how that property has changed. Clicking on that photo will give us a little insight into that home. All right, not too shabby. A little data, right? But what'd they buy it for? Do you want it now? At 95,000? Will you take it? I'd take it. All right, so then they went ahead and they resold it. Let's see if there's any changes done to this property. Here we go. All right, a little paint. Looks good. All right, they put some money into it. Cleaned it up. And then recently, let's see the customer that we are going to be spending some time with. All right, and this is the closed property. I haven't seen the property yet, but this is how they purchased it. It's looking pretty good. So we're able to research that property, take a look at what it looks like, see the interior, right? The style of the home. 
My next step is I'm going to continue to research this property by giving it a click on the MLS number. That's going to give me the entirety of the MLS, and I can look for things like the square foot living area, right? That's the inside of the home under AC. We want to take a look at the bedrooms. We want to take a look at the baths, and I also want to take a look at some of these remarks, right? So I want to do a little research on here. I want to take a look at what subdivision I'm in. I'm in Breeze Swept Estates. And then I want to introduce you to a program called IMAP. Who's using IMAP already? I love it. So here, what do we want to verify? When we're looking at IMAP, we can take a look at who our owner is. So if we need to discuss this listing or a possible listing, we want to confirm that the decision maker is there. We also want to confirm, does he live there? Or is this an additional property that he's purchased? You can verify that information by comparing your property address and your tax mailing address. If those properties match, he lives there. If they don't match, where does he live? Current address or tax right. mailing address? Right. Mailing address, correct. Now, what else can we confirm in this section? You have a lot of great info, like your subdivision information. You got your legal description. All very noteworthy if you're interested in inputting this listing into the MLS. We also can scroll down to the bottom. So here we have our lot size, by the way. Mm -hmm. And as I move through here, we also have our tax information. And if this property was in a special tax district area, it would be listed here. Any of the building information we can view, view in this section. But since today is about CMAs, we're going to jump to the top right hand corner of the page and we're going to give a click on find comparables. When we click find comparables, the system has very neatly added all my information about my subject property on the top left hand side. We have the last sales price when that was, the market value, the total area, the living area, year built, is there a pool, is there a garage, it's all listed for us here. We also have the projected sales price, you have two ranges. Now the range I would focus on would be on the second range based on square feet, not on that first range, which is used to tax the home. So you wanna take a look at the second uh, range of numbers. You also have a nice explanation of the calculation and the comparison criteria. Mine and yours may be different. I do have a little hack for you. <clears throat> you can update this information. We have your lot size plus or minus. If you haven't edited this before, it's going to look for properties that are plus or minus 50%. 50% bigger and 50% smaller than your subject property. So you want to take a second, give that a little click and update that to 20%. That's a good starting point. You also want to do the same for living area. And then you want to take a look at where that property is located. During located, a good start is half a mile, but you do and you can go out a mile and if you have enough comparables, another really great option is to stay within your own subdivision, which would be breeze swept estates. So I can update this now. <clears throat> and then the last option could be you can update from three to six months all the way down to five. So I like to keep my information within half a mile sold in the last six months and set this as a default. Click. So when I set this as a default, that means anytime you're curious about a property, you know where the icon is for IMAP. You can click on that icon, you click on comparables on the top right hand corner, and you've already begun to receive information regarding that price point. Now, as I move through here, we do have quite a lot of properties that are readily available on this page. We have up to 14 comparables. So let's see if I can make some changes to my stats or to my comparison criteria. Let's say I want to get closer to the size of my property. I'm going to update that lot size to 10%, living area to 10%, and I'm going to update that criteria to see what I have left. As I move through here, I do have a tighter range, and then I'm going to see if I have anything within the last three months for the freshest comparables. Update criteria. Now I'm updating it, but I'm not setting it as a default. And as I move through here, I do have 
from 341,700 to 654,500. We're going to start taking a look at some of the comparables that we have towards our bottom. Um, there is some additional info that we want to take a look here. Do we know which properties out of the five were listed by a realtor? Yes, so I don't know. Two, three, three. So I two, one, three. Yes, the ones that are listed with the R for realtor, and that would be two and three. Now, statistically, <clears throat> what properties sell higher? Sold with a realtor or not? With the realtor. So we do want to take a look at all of them, but you can start taking a look at the ones that were not. So as I move through here, I know that this 375 and these 360 could be hindering my results, right? They're outliner properties so I can uncheck them. I'm down to three. I'm happy with three. I'm nice and close in size, located within half a mile. They're nice and fresh in the last three months. And I'm able to have my projected price and it's a nice tighter price point. Now, what am I missing here though? Do I know what these properties look like? Am I seeing active properties or pending properties? No, but these properties have sold in the last three months. Now, is an active price negotiable? Is a pending price negotiable? So these have actually closed. You can begin in this section. Now, if I wanted to share this with a customer, there's a few ways that you can. On the right-hand side, you can click on email this page. When you click on email this page, the system's gonna give you the opportunity to go in and pop in your customer's information put in their subject. You can even copy yourself, send a little message. And then towards the bottom, you can send email. So that's one of the ways. But if you send it this way, it's going to come from IMAP. So another way that agents prefer to send it so it comes out through their email and they can also attach this CMA to other CMAs within your program is to download it as a PDF. So you have here on the right, save as PDF. All right, that property will download for you. All right, and it is readily available for you to share. Now, is it fancy? No, but it is a great place to start. Do you guys like IMAP? Yes. Yes. Yes, sure yes ma'am. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move out of IMAP, and then we're going to go back into the matrix system. All right, so we were able to review. We have an initial price point from IMAP. We can move back into criteria, and then you can do the same. Now, some of the things that you're going to do a little different is you are going to clear your map, and then, yes, no, you're fine. Uh huh. So you said when we're looking at this, we should be looking at the estimated range based on value ratio or based on square feet. Square feet, square feet yeah. You're welcome. So from here, we would select our statuses. You're looking at active. Anything else I would pick? Closed. Closed. We're back inside of matrix. Um, We can pick active with contract. If we're picking active with contract, what else are we picking? Pending. And then some agents, they do pick an additional one. And I think I heard it. And that's expired. And why would they pick expired? Did you guys need this class <laughs> to show them that, yes, someone flew way too close to the sun. They got a little too greedy. They wasted a little time, right? And it expired. It was priced way, way too high. So we can pick our statuses. You're going to pick the type of property. You're also going to take a second take and select the type of property, single, single. Now, towards the top, if I wanted to do the range, I'm going to go ahead and select my map search at the top. That means I'm going to pop in my initial property, my subject, and I'm going to search around that property. Northeast, first, Ave. And the system's starting to give me some information. It's telling me that it's in Miami Shores. Now, my property is not in Miami Shores. So I wanted to show you that you just keep going, right? Will it? No, I'm just kidding. North Miami. 
Yeah. It's 12525 Northeast 1st Avenue, North Miami, 33161. So as I put that in there, if your property is not coming up, just keep typing it in until you receive the one that you're looking for. Now we have our statuses, we have our property type, we're within a quarter of a mile of this property. We're looking at closed 180 days, expired 180 days, and now we're adding in our bedrooms. Three bedrooms, we're adding in our baths, two baths, and we can start with the living area for this property. Now, the living area for this property was 1750, 1700. So we're going to do plus or minus from 10 to 20 percent. So I'll start that range at 1500. And then I will wrap up that range at 2000. See what I have available. We have eight matches towards the bottom. I'm going to click on results. Now, this is called your result page. We have a combination of active property here, closed sales, and expired property. I'm going to put this in order by subdivision. I have some properties that are outside of my subdivision. So I want to teach you another tip. You can select. You can click on refine. And you can click on discard. And voila, goodbye. Another option that I want to show you is as I move through this screen, Towards the right, you do have that square foot living area that's readily available. And you also have top right hand corner, your lot square feet. I can go ahead and put that in order. Our lot square feet for this property was almost 8,000 square feet. So as I'm reviewing these, they all pretty fall much fall in line with what I'm looking for. Now, I like to do a CMA based on a search. So from here, now that I did the work, I like to select all of these properties. I did my CMA, I did the work, I go back into actions, and I have the CMA available here. Now, before I press this button, I do wanna show you that it does exist in another place. For those of you who prefer, under my matrix, all of your work lives there. So you have my matrix, my CMA, and you can begin the widget from there. I like to begin it from the search, and I'll show you why. When you click on CMA, I'm then able to start, right? I can add in my customer. I can add in my pages. And as I move in through comparables, these properties are already assigned. Why? Because I began in the search. If not, you would then search from your comparables on this section, which is perfectly fine. I heard of, but that's much better. Everyone, everyone has their style. Um, and I want to go ahead and go into my matrix, go into my CMAs. And I want to show you that as you work a property, this is one of the only things inside of matrix that's automatically saving for you, the CMA. So I have an unnamed CMA. This is what I was working on this morning. And I also have um, the same one that I've gone through that process. So let me go ahead and edit it. You can edit, you can view it, you can email it, you can delete it. And this will last in your system for 180 days. 180 days from one from the last modified day. Meaning the last day that you opened it up, stuck your finger in it, changed it a little bit is the modified date. So I'm going to click on edit CMA. I'm going to click on comparables. I want to teach you another little tip. You do have it available as a presentational CMA, but as you select these properties, you can add or remove from this section. You can go forward, you can go backwards regarding the additions to your CMA. Let's take a look at the finished. Let's take a look at view CMA. And this is the presentational view within the system. These are the same comparables. Um, these are the same comparables that we recently picked. Yes, this is by default. 
yeah this is by default this is what it looks like i wanted to show you this view why because sometimes you may want this view you may want multiple pages explaining your cma process once you add in those comparables, the system will fill out these pages for you. But I want to go ahead and also allow George Jalil to be able to show you a different style of how you can present a CMA. You may not need all of these pages, right? You may just need, I need the meat and potatoes. What is this worth? I'm going to move right back into Matrix and I want to be able to segue for George. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have a combination of both regarding, depending on the page that you selected. So I think you should have both figures available for your customer. All right. So from here, I'm going to move you right back into your dashboard. On your dashboard, you have a section that I want to introduce you to. George is going to review it as well. But you have a section that's called market reports. Market Reports lives up at the top blue floating bar. And when you click on it, you'll have an additional place where you can add in these CMAs. And it's called the 1004 MC report. So now that you're visually, you know where we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and start to transition into George. So thank you so much for having me this morning. I will be towards the back and I will also be available towards the end of class for any of your questions. Okay. Thank, thank you, guys. You depends on how it is that you want to price point that. So if you're working with an investor, you would create a CMA and the number that you're going to look at is not going to be the number that's the most economic necessarily, but you're also going to want to look at if we put money into this, what's the most I can price it at in the system? For the seller, again, they're going to want to know how much I can get for my property and the buyer is going to want to know what's the most economic. So you will be updating those figures slightly depending on who you're working with. You do have an analysis for an investor that you can find in RPR. It's called the Valuate tool. So you have that one that's a little bit different, but you do have multiple CMAs that you can create. And most agents will combine multiple so that they're able to give a really good figure. Okay. All right. Let's open up that PowerPoint. Now, before I bring George up, I do want to mention that George Law has 40 years, right, in the industry. He has also had many titles and many roles within our organizations, Miami Association of Realtors, Florida Realtors, as well as with NAR. He is a broker president with Miami Way Realty. He is a state certified residential real estate appraiser. He is VA approved, and he's also a skilled witness appraiser assisting in court cases to resolve probate as well as divorce cases. We also want to wish a congratulations to George Jalil for recently being voted in by NAR and by the Miami Association uh, Board of Directors that he now has a very special lifetime achievement of Realtor Emeritus. Thank you, Christy. It's a great pleasure to be here in paradise with all you guys. Actually, Christy and I worked together over 15 years in real estate, so many different hats. Um, as Christy mentioned, I'm a real estate broker, but I'm also a state certified appraiser. And uh, how many people have been in real estate here less than two years? Oh, cool. It's usually the reverse. How many over 10 years? How many over 20 years? Cool. Very cool. So you guys, everybody raised their hands when they said, uh, when Christy asked about IMAP and IMAP, all appraisers and realtors use IMAP. Does anybody here use the program, which is a very light, easy program to use? It's called 1004 MC. Wow, that's amazing. We actually have one person that uses it. No, it's usually zero or oh, two people. Good. Excellent. I applaud you. Um, I'm here to show you that program. It's hidden in plain sight. It's very easy to use. And I'm going to make a very bold statement to you that your CMA that you do is not complete without using the 1004 MC. Why is it called 1004 MC shortly? I don't have a lot of time with you guys because the class is over at 1230, but I will hang around afterwards. You do have this PowerPoint. This PowerPoint is fresh. You'll see the dates on it. I finished it last night because I wanted to give you uh, relevant, fresh data. 
from the different markets. And I also created it, even though I work in Miami, I created it for Broward. So you'll be able to use this. You can take pictures of the screen, obviously, but you're going to get the full presentation. So the arrow keys. Okay, that's just about me. Uh, what are you going to learn? How to use appraiser tools to improve your listing presentations. How to use appraiser tools to help you with buyer presentations. How to understand and determine time adjustments. Has anybody ever heard of time adjustments? Yes. Okay. Again, I applaud this class. When I gave this class in Coral Gables, nobody ever heard of it. So you can't really... So nobody here except for two people have used the 1004MC, but if this were an, a, a class of appraisers, it would be 100%. In fact, the, an appraiser cannot appraise a property without using the 1004MC. 1004 is a Fannie Mae designation. It just means the uniform appraisal form, which is used the same form throughout the whole United States. When you write a sales contract, that sales contract is a state document. It was approved by the the Bar Association and the State Supreme Court of Florida. If you go to Georgia, it's a different contract. Appraisers have to use a, a national form called the URAR. And for Fannie Mae, that's the that's the that's the 1004. So that's the only reason. Don't 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 worry about the 1004. What's more important is what's after the 1004, which is MC, and that stands for market condition. We as realtors and appraisers cannot determine value on a property without taking into consideration what is the market condition currently. So what we're going to do is we're going to look, go around the room and uh, let's ask a couple of questions. How many people here are working with customers or have had a closing uh, in, in the Western area? Working with buyers or sellers in the Western area. How about plantation? How about Pembroke Pines? Yeah. How about Miramar? Okay, so those are four areas that are kind of around where we are here. So you are licensed by the state of Florida as professional realtors. So if I asked you the question for those people that are working in those areas, how many people feel that over the last 12 months, homes in Weston have gone up in value, down in value, or has the market stayed stable? Raise your hands if you think prices have gone up in Weston. In a year? Year over year, right. Over the last year. Okay, two people. How many feel the prices have stayed stable? How many people feel prices have gone down in Weston? So the majority of professional realtors had no opinion. And that's what I'm going to solve for you today. Today, when you leave here, all of you will know and be able to replicate whether prices are going up or down. When you go around with a buyer, when you sit with a seller, when you meet an appraiser, you want to know, are prices going up or down? But you don't want to just say, well, I think they're going up or down. You want to be able to print a report on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, a report that will tell you just like IMAP gives you the sales, there should be a report and a program, and there is, that will tell you whether prices are going up or down. But more importantly, it's not just whether prices are going up or down. You want to be able to sit with your buyer, and if your buyer says, you showed me a house in Miramar, and then you showed me a house in Pembroke Pines, are prices going up or down? And you as a good realtor, oh, prices are going up. Yeah, prices are going up. But if they ask you, well, how much? And if you don't have an answer for that, that's going to not be optimal for you to be able to tell the person, well, I think Miramar is going up a little bit more than Pembroke Pines, so you can make your decision where you want to buy. It's an important piece of information. And here's the great part of this program. It increases your relevance as a realtor. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if you pull up IMAP, you'll find sales. Any child with a phone that's eight years old can pull, can pull up, right. you know, realtor.com or the company that starts with a Z and they can get sales, right? Right? So, so, 
So the buyer doesn't need us to pull up sales. Now, if you give your buyer a report that I'm going to show you how to do, and I promise you it's going to be easy. I'm making that promise to you. If you give them that report and that report shows the property has gone up one half a percent per month over the last year in Pembroke Pines, the first thing that your buyer is going to say, oh, where do I get that app? Or they're going to say, what website can I go to? And you're going to say 786 and whatever your phone number is. You say, you're going to have to call me because that's through my professional association and it's not open to the public. So whenever you can offer value and a service to your customer that the customer can't get by themselves on a phone, is that a good thing? Absolutely. 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 Correct. It's not on that Z company or, or many others that are online. But I'm going to show you this, and I will hang around after class. But unfortunately, we have to stop at 1230, right, Christy? Well, okay. I'll keep it rolling. As long as you guys want it. Yes. No. Uh, Dade County, Broward. Palm Beach, because it pulls the information from your MLS, which, by the way, the association that we are all members of, we live in paradise, but the association is wonderful, and we can make our association even more wonderful if we're kind to each other and cooperate with each other, and and that's why I always, and uh, yes, and, and, and if you see one of our brothers or sister realtors making a mistake, let's help them. Let's, let's help them be better. Um, I saw a uh, a funny ad uh, for a restaurant. It was um, somebody had put a funny ad in front of a restaurant. It said, uh, "Welcome to Karma Cafe." You saw that, and then it said, "There is no menu," and then underneath it said, "Please sit down. You will be served what you deserve." So that's that's kind of that's how life is, right? We're going to be served what we deserve. So I'm going to show you how to be very professional and be very relevant so again you're going to be very familiar with this because i saw you guys are kind of an advanced class so you know how to use imap you know how to use matrix as christy mentioned it's kind of being blocked by my picture there but if you go to reports which i think you went to there there before uh where uh you could in depending on the screen you're looking at sometimes it's under more or sometimes it's under market reports. If, you, if you're on a wide screen, you can see it by itself. So if you click there, you can go down to where this arrow, and again, you can take pictures of this, but you don't have to because Christy is gonna send you uh, this, uh, this report. And by the way, she's one of our best trainers. If, you, if this is the first class you've taken with her, not because she's in the room, she has three amazing things. She's very smart, she's very kind, and very important, she's very patient. And it's not anything new. So I'm just telling the truth, Christy. So anyway, market condition 1004 MC. That's what we're going to work with. Now, it's a very easy. You just click, click. You get into there. When you get into it, it looks kind of familiar. It doesn't really look like anything special. But it's completely different in the way it operates. So this is blocking me. So I'm going to explain it to you. Okay? The the We, we can't bring the Zoom thing down, can we? Okay. Is it different than when I select my property and go to the page and select it from there? Mm -hmm. um, this is a different screen than when you do a search. This no, is what I'm saying. The same report, though, the way that I've always used it, I've always used it for many years. You've used 1004 MC? Oh, okay, yeah. great, great. So, the Welcome. Way that I, the, the way that I get to it is after I select my property, I go to print. Right. And one of the reports that I select is, is that. Is there, yeah. Is there a difference doing it? That way that I'm doing it versus the one I'm going to do it now. Well, we're going to do it now, and then you'll tell me if this. I, I thought there was only one way. You generate it, it 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 brings it on the screen, and then you can you can sh you can share it, you can print it, but you'll tell me if it's different from what I get. Again, a hundred percent of appraisers use this, and the reason they use this, it's because they have to, because in every appraisal, one of the first adjustments is not for a pool or for GLA. It's for time because garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. If if you are sitting with your buyer and you're showing them comps that are in a neighborhood that are three to six months old and you don't make the time adjustment, then the value that you're going to get at the end 
is is wrong because it's not taking that into consideration. So I'm super pumped that there's like three three or four people here that are kind of nodding and they and and they and you, yeah, a hundred percent. Thank you. So anyway, um, what I usually like to do because if you have too small of a sampling, if there's too few properties, like less than thirty, you're you're going to get a skewed amount. So I always like to first start with the city I'm in. So we were talking about Weston. So what you do is come down here and put Weston in the city. Now, I don't know how you, uh, sir, your name? Frank. Frank. Frank, I'm not sure how you do it. You can do it, obviously, anyway here. We're not going to have time to go through all the ways, but you can do zip You can do zip code. If you wanted to know what the whole county uh, is doing, whether the whole county is going up or down, you could do it. But I'm going to tell you something. When you read online that, oh, you know, prices in Dade County have gone on 10 percent, that's a useless number because we're all made of little, little neighborhoods. So, you know, uh, Coral Gables is going to be different than, you know, Miami Beach and Plantation will be different than, you know. So so uh, you put in the city up here, you want to put the information going back a year. Because what we're going to do is we're going to break a year. We're going to do it what the appraisers do and what the banks require and what the VA requires and FHA. They want to know. They want to know a snapshot of the whole year. They want to know seven to twelve months back. Then they want to know. I'll show you when we get to it. Three different ways. So you put zero to three sixty five, and then just check off active coming soon, active with contract, and you can check pending too. But the most important, obviously, is closed. Now, once you do that. You're done. I mean, that's it. So you can you can literally do this report for your customer on the fly at his house or in your car. It's really super simple. So now I'm going to show you what you get. But the problem is Matrix, which is owned by CoreLogic, has not gone the next step, which I've been asking them to do to help us. And I'll show you what that next step is. And I think that's why a lot of realtors don't use this. But when you leave here, you're going to be in power. So. You press generate report, right? So, Frank, you're familiar with this. This is what it looks like. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit later in this presentation that, yes, sir. I, mean, uh, I, I click on generate report. And uh -huh. see report. Yep, and your numbers are different. This is dynamic. This will change from hour to hour. As thousands of realtors take properties off, put new properties on, closings happen, these numbers change. That's why I tried to go as late at as night as possible last night. And as you can see, the yellow on the top, for those of you that can't see it, it was done last night on the 12th. The city is Weston. And here are the three numbers. Now, who was it that said Weston had not gone up in value? You were right. Okay. It's gone up a teeny weeny bit, but very little. So what do these numbers mean? And then I'll show you what the appraisers do that you can all do to make these numbers meaningful for your buyer. Because right now this, this is good, but it doesn't really help you. So now we have to take the next step, which hopefully someday CoreLogic will put this part in, but I'm gonna show you how to do it real easy. So now this is Weston, right? Mm -hmm. um, seven to 12 months ago, 824,000 was the median price. Four to six months. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you guys see? Yes. yes. Okay. Nice. Good. Uh, four to six months, 890000 It actually went up four to six months ago. We don't know why. And that's happened in a lot of neighborhoods that I've done this in Dade and Broward. For some reason, four to six months ago, prices went up. And then it went back down to 831 which is three, three months ago to today or yesterday, median price was... 831,000 in Weston. Now, I know there's houses that are lower and houses that are higher. That doesn't matter. What we're trying to do is get a trend of the condition of the market. So it doesn't matter if you say, yeah, but George, you know, there's houses there that are, that are a million and uh, over. That doesn't matter for our trend. Bless you. So, so what matters is you want to be in as tight a neighborhood as possible. Now, you can go into Weston. You can play with this all day tomorrow. And you can pick little subdivisions in Weston, but if you get less than 30 sales, see how many we have here, 158, the number on the top there, 176, 217. 
that's a good sampling. If it's too little the sampling, the system returns blank, an error. I've had people call me, you know, and they go, hey, George, it's not working. It's like, I, I'm not getting anything. I say, okay, increase the, increase the size. You can do this also in condos. Each condo is its own neighborhood. If you have a condo like Century Village that has 500 units, you can do it. But if you have, but if you have a small condo, then you have to do the, the neighborhood and you have to go outside the condo. But this is good for condo and it's good for multifamily. Right now, very, oh, very important. I didn't show you in the last screen. You got to pick single family. My bad. I made a boo boo. What is the deal? Be right here. Uh, no. Well, multifamily income, yes, but not like warehouses and things like that. It, it's not set up for that. But you do have to check whichever property you're doing. So, my bad. I didn't. So, um, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so, I just saw that we can set it up based on a, a map search, like creating a polygon. Do you recommend doing it that way? You know, you know what? That's a good question. I don't think I don't think CoreLogic gives you the polygon. It, it doesn't give you polygon, but what it does give you is the map. The uh, oh, you can change, so you can do a uh, circumference, right? A, a, a diameter of a, a, a quarter of a mile, half a mile, one mile. I don't recommend it because you're going into different neighborhoods. You know, so you, you got it. Yeah, as as the professional realtor, you know the neighborhoods better than anybody. You got to try to stay in that neighborhood. So now what you want to do is you want to make this, you want to tra translate this and, and make this usable for you, make it usable for the customer, make it usable for the seller or the buyer. And guess what? This is a good way to check your appraiser to make sure when you get to an, uh, meet an appraiser, instead of just giving him comparables, give him the 1004 MC. First, he'll be a little bit looking at you, you know, and then he'll say, oh, okay. Just because sometimes it's possible that an appraiser might not make the adjustment. I'm going to show you at the end how this adjustment can make or break a sales contract. One well, quick comment for a question. Yes. If you do it the way that I've been doing it, which is selecting your property, you can select it, you select oh, your map, your area, you can do it that way. That way you know exactly that using the comparables that make sense to you. Okay. And then when you go to print and select that report, then you know they selecting properties that will be useful to you. Okay. If you can select more than 30 properties, then you can try to do it that way. But remember, you're not trying to figure out the comps here. Right. That's where most realtors make a mistake. What you want is the market condition of that area. So it's no good to just use 30 or 20 or 10. Appraisers will use three, four, five comps. But when they do this, they do they use 100, 200 because you want to know what's going on in that neighborhood. You want you want to be able to answer three questions in the appraisal. But that's not the neighborhood. That's the whole city of Weston. That's the whole city of Weston. But it's giving you the trend of the city of Weston, which is what the appraiser is going to use. So now what you're able to do, if you can go into a smaller area and have enough, then you can do it. I'm I'm just letting you know that usually what you want to do is to get a trend. You want to use um, the largest area that's going to be more or less considered uh, regionally um, an area. You could also use a zip code if you happen to know that that zip code encompasses most of the. Uh... Now, of course, this is going to eliminate condos and townhouses that are over there. So let. Yeah. Not enough sampling. Yeah, not enough. You have to put a larger area. So what area did you put? Put a zip code? Oh, well, this is what I did last night. Yeah. So I'll look at it afterwards with you. But uh, you got to put single family and you got to check off these boxes. Yes. Yes. Thank you for keeping my keep, thank you for keeping my place. Um in in the in the top of every appraisal, after the uh basic information of address and folio number and legal description, it asks, is property increasing, decreasing, or stable? Those are the those are the three answers that the appraiser can't go to the next section 
unless he answers those questions. Mm -hmm. The only way to answer that question, because that's what the lenders want to know, is what's going on in the market, right? What's going on in the market? This form was actually developed in 19... Um, in 2007 or 2009, 2008, something like that. I'll, I'll look at it right now. Right after the the prices started declining because the banks were lending money and then prices were coming down and they wanted to know how much because if we're going to lend somebody 200000 but the house is going down in value, we need to know that when we're doing the underwriting. So they wanted to uh, protect themselves so that they required in every appraisal this uh, this form. Let me see. In every appraisal, there's this form. It's an addendum like you guys put, like we put um, a lead-based paint addendum, something like that. There's an addendum in the appraisal, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end of this presentation. You'll see the appraisal addendum. So when you read an appraisal, you'll know, oh, yeah, that's the 1004 MC. I know how to read this. So it's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of other things here that in a longer class I could show you, but so in order to make this usable, you have to take another step, which is going outside of matrix, unfortunately, but it's very simple. You can just go into Google and type percentage change calculate, not percentage difference, because there's a difference with percentage difference. It's change, because you want to know what the percent change is. Have you ever used that, Frank, or done that? No. Okay, cool. So everybody's getting something out of this class, right, Frank? <laughs> okay, so so I you can pick any one of these. They're free. My favorite one, because it's kind of colorful and easy for me to teach, is the one that's called Omni Calculator. I have nothing to do with that website. It's just kind of cool looking for presentation purposes. So I click on that. And this is what I get, or well, this is what you'll get. It's a nice big thing. And can anybody tell me what's going on here? Because this is a very smart class. I usually wouldn't ask that question. It's calculating the difference. How can that help you? Less than 1%. Less than 1% in what time? In a year. God, you guys are smart. You're very smart. Yeah, this is nothing. This is like less than 1% in a whole year. So when the young lady over here is sitting with her customer in Weston, she can print it out and she can show it to them and say, guys, right now, it's just not going up, right? It's important for you to know that. And it's also important for you to be able to say to the customer how you got that information. Just like when an appraiser makes an adjustment and the underwriter calls the appraiser and they say, why did you give 30000 for a pool? The appraiser can't say, well, that, I like the pool. You know, <laughs> he can't say that. He's got to say where he got it. So realtors are just as professional as appraisers, and they should be able to sit with a customer and say, this is what's going on. Now, the next ones are more exciting because this one's not exciting. Correct. So the next the next step that I did. What's the definition of initial value? Initial value. For this calculator, which this is not a real estate calculator, it's just saying the first calcul the the first calculation, the second calculation, and then what's the difference. So now you'll see when I show you the next screen. Well, the next screen is Pembroke Pines. What did what did people say about Pembroke Pines? Increase. So, what do you think? Yes. So before you got here today, if somebody said to you, "Is Pembroke Pines going up more than Weston?" or you know what's going on in Pembroke Pines, as a realtor, you wouldn't be able to know that unless you did this calculation. Okay, so now, like Frank has done, he, now you have the raw numbers, but now we wanna make it more meaningful for ourselves, more meaningful for our customers. And by the way, for those of you that are on social media, which I think by a show of hands with everybody except for one person, you can, Put this into whatever like emails you send or or postings that you send. You don't have to rely on an outside source. You can say, hey, my calculations have shown me that, you know, as of the 12th, this is what was going on in Pembroke Pines. So 
589, 610, and then 640. A nice steady line if we were looking at a regression, you know, analysis in Excel. So now what do we do with that? Okay, the same thing. We just rinse and repeat, right? You go here, get my little calculator. You put 589 as the initial, 640 as the last one, right? Because we got that line going like this. And now, who's the smart? Well, we are all smart. And you put your hand on your head when you said that. So that's good. See, even realtors, uh, experienced realtors, you know, sometimes get surprised how two neighborhoods, both of these neighborhoods are beautiful, by the way. I've worked in both of them. You guys have too. Why is, yeah, very close to each other. So now you've got almost like 0.75%, almost 1% per month. Yes. Sir. So with that 8.6%, you could say on a monthly basis, we're going at around just under 1%, let's say. So if you put the home on the market today, um, you want the price a little bit higher. I don't recommend going higher than one or two percent. So you're getting ahead of me. All of you are so smart. Look, let me just tell you a little bit of what this gentleman is saying, which is 100% right. And thank you for bringing that up. I, I, I could do this for you, but I want you, because I, I know if I engage you, the blood flows in that brain. And take this number, please. And divide it by 12 months. Because that's what means to your customer. And I'm going to take you to the next step. So somebody give me what that number is. 0.72. So three quarters of 1%. Hey, Mr. Buyer, buy the house today. Because in three months, it would have gone up over 2%. So if it's an $800,000 house, in two months, you're going to make $16,000. So... This is important. What is the formula up on the top left hand screen that I can't see? It's basically breaking this down for you. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of different calculators that you can do for free. You could also do this on your uh, Android or iPhone, but I did this so that you guys could see it. You don't have to use this program. I just wanted to show you that when you do the 1004 NC, you got to bring it to its conclusion. It's like a program that says, you know, and I'm going, when are we getting there? And yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. You got to do it yourself, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, George, as an appraiser, what we recommend is we're running numbers. And so, a number of times, there's a big difference in price when you go less and you go least. Right. So, would you <clears throat> narrow it down to how many was the seller and what times specific to anything less than 75? I would. Um, I would both. And I'll tell you, let me explain to you. Excellent question. Everybody understand her question? Yeah. Because when you're working with a buyer or a seller, okay, I, I, you know, the West side is one world. The East side is another world, yeah. right? Yeah. And just like the young lady was saying over here, you can't really do the whole city, but you can and get an idea. You just have to quantify and qualify that when you're speaking with your buyer. So now look here. What is your name? No. Pamela? Yes. So look, Pamela. You can do it. Why? Because you got 256 sales, 275 sales, 449 sales. I think you have enough that you can break the two. And then you can come up with the difference. And then you could be like super smart. Because not only are you like showing your buyers that prices are going up, but you're actually drilling down for your listing presentation east and west. So that... Um, there's there are different ways, but the most important thing is when you are, how many people have ever sat in front of somebody and told them that they are the best realtor to list their property? Okay, so yeah, if you're if you're in a if you're in a listing presentation, right? If you're in a listing presentation, you want that person to believe that you are the best realtor to sell their property. Now, if you are the only realtor that they speak with that gives them a report like this, it transmits to them professionalism, experience, knowledge, and oh, by the way, honey, this realtor told me something none of the other realtors we've spoken to have told me. Competence. Competence. I love that, love that word. What's your name? Raymond. 
Raymond, Raymond, thank you. Competence. Competence. And by the way, there are so many realtors in this town that are professional and very few of them are using this. So I have to, probably I'll be a very, very old man before I teach every one of our hundreds of, not hundreds, but 50,000 realtors. It's going to take a long time. But we start with the small group, right? We start with you guys and um, and uh, with a small group in Coral Gables. And now you can, you know, show other people if you want. So this program is very quick, very fast. So now plantation. Oh, what happened with plantation? Let's see. Oh, not too bad. What did people say about plantation? Did they say it was going up or down? Sideways? A stable market is not that bad either, guys. If prices haven't gone up, but they haven't gone down, that just means everything is taking a break and we're waiting, you know, because since we live in paradise, what's the bad part about that? Everybody wants to come here, right? So why, why are prices going up? Because we don't have inventory. Everybody's coming down, you know? Uh, so it's not bad if the prices take a little break so that so that wages can catch up a little bit and people and people can afford. So now here we go. Here's plantation. Same thing. We just do the same thing again. Six hundred and thirty thousand all the way up to six eighty eight. And by the way, this is fresh from last night. When you do this tonight, might get a different number, but it should be about the same. You know. That's that's very good. Every one of these things is a, a little nugget of uh, knowledge for you, but it just means how much, how how many homes are being absorbed in that in that time frame. Absorbed means sold. Another one that's really nice is this one down here. Okay, this is what the sales price is compared to the listing price. So in plantation, houses are selling very close to asking price. So there's a lot of good information here, but I want to uh, take you to the next uh, level, so to speak. But so, OK, so here we have plantation. Plantation is nine point two. Year over year. So that's is that good? That's actually that gets a that's actually a lot of <laughs> Yeah, Lauder Hill, yeah, Lauder Hill is um fourteen point nine. You just did it on your phone? I, yeah, I'm doing it on my phone. Everybody, she gets five stars. She did that on her phone. That's pretty cool. So what does that mean? That means it's really you can't do IMAP on a phone, guys. It won't work. This you can do on a phone. So what I'm showing you is everybody getting this, by the way? Because I want to I don't want I don't, no realtor left behind. That's my motto. No realtor left behind. Does is everybody understand the program? More important than that, does everybody understand the relevance of the program? Why is this important? Why do you have to start with this before you even get the cops? Because that's what appraisers are forced to do. So, uh, yeah, you on the phone. Awesome. That's this, great. This was pretty good because I've used, like I was telling her, like I've used that 1004 on um, on the matrix, but I stopped using it. I'm like, what the heck am I looking at? So now, <laughs> yeah, so like literally, I mean, I did the whole five, seven months, but you now pulling it together and explaining. Right. The, and the that matrix. also answers my question, what I've always wanted to know. Like, well, dang, how do I determine? Everybody talks about knowing what the appreciation is and where the market is going. Like, how do I do that? <laughs> So, yeah, and I more important, to... not only how you do that, but now you can send from your phone because I know you know how to do this. You could send it to print and you could give it to your customer or you could share it on the phone. So that customer knows not just that you're saying the prices are up, but where are you supporting it? How are you supporting it? And you could tell her, well, look, there was X amount of sales. This is what they sold for. This is what the, the, the ratio is between the absolutely. You need to go to the last step. But unfortunately, but fortunately for you guys, the last step that I'm showing you takes you outside of matrix. So we're kind of like stepping outside the box and we're doing stuff for ourselves. That's kind of good. Can you use that for rental trends too? Ye not with this program, unfortunately. That's Wouldn't that be... Yeah, but I, I wish. So, so, um, so here, here we have this. Did anybody divide this up? Well, we know it's 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 up there. It's really good. Nine percent price is going up. That's really good. 
you're sh if you're showing anybody houses there, you say, look, buy it and, and because, you know, it's a good investment and we can only go historically. Obviously, if something horrible happens tomorrow, we, we don't know. But the way it's trending, which is the market condition, the condition of the market, it's trending that you're going to be making almost 1% every month. So don't wait three months because you would have lost 3%. And, um, you know, 3%, I, I don't even know that there's anything at 400,000. That's like 12,000, but that's 400,000. You know, it's 24,000 on 800,000. Realtors are really good at percentages. So I know you're following me. So this was now Miramar. Now, remember we talked, I didn't want to take too much time. We talked about Weston, Plantation, Pembroke Pines, and Miramar. Who is the winner? What city? Because that's another thing. If, if, if somebody's coming from New Jersey, you want to be able to sit with them and say, hey, you know what? Let me tell you not only about all the schools and about all the great neighborhoods, but I want to tell you what cities right now are hot and are going up in value. I, I have a theory. I have a theory on that. And also the lower prices I still have some room to go up a little bit. Whereas some of these like $2 million homes, like in Pinecrest in Miami, is going down because it's like already reached the peak and now it's like, oh, we got to settle down a little bit. So this is a wealth of knowledge that you can do right in your phone very fast, very quick, and your buyers will love you, you know, and, they, and they'll have to keep calling you. And they'll say, listen, can I join the board? Can I get this program? Say, no, you can't. No, you cannot. Great. That's a great expectation. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's it's got it's it. Why haven't we all been putting this in our CMAs so that people can be amazed and thralled with us and say, I, I want I got to call you. What you want is to establish a relationship with your buyers and your sellers. And then you want to let them know by email, by text, however it's convenient. Say, look, please, once a month, whatever you can call me, you know, call. Honey, call Frank. Find out that our property, what's going on? What's trending in our neighborhood? Because it's important and they're going to need to call you to get this information. Not so much the, the Z company stuff, but um, so, so okay, guys, who's the winner, by the way? What city? We are, are. are you sure? We didn't check the percentage. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's the winner right here. It's close, but Miramar is the winner because... The other one was 9.2. Yeah. So this one was almost almost 10% there. We almost got 10% with Miramar. Well, let me just say my city is winning. Lots of good stuff here, guys. And I'd be happy to teach other classes about it because I Yeah, because it it, it kind of bothers me when I stand in front of you guys and nobody knows how to do this and then all of a sudden after 45 minutes all of a sudden you're like your whole world your world changes and and we had it's hidden in plain sight. We had this all the time, you know? Yeah. That's why sometimes if the things don't make sense, you got to check it in a month or two to see if it's like, yeah. Because remember, all appraisals are historical documents. They're all using old data. So now let me take you into the appraisal world to really rock you a little bit. Let's talk about home factor for waterfront property. Thank you. Sorry. That's like a that's a that's a, that's a heavy class. <laughs> pools, pools. Uh, it, there's different ways. There's the there's the depreciated cost approach. There's um there's obviously the comps. There's an income approach. But let me. We all know Miramar is the winner. Okay. So now this is the addendum. Now that I have your attention, this is the actual addendum that was created. I want to say two thousand. 2009, 2009. So this is an addendum. Think of it like an addendum that you have on your contract. In 2009, Fannie Mae came to all the appraisers and said, you will put this in every appraisal because we need to know because if Frank comes to us and wants to borrow 500,000 on his house and we're going to lend them 80% of 500,000 and three months later, this house is going to be worth less. We, the bank, are exposed. Everybody understand that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So we appraisers had to do this had no choice we still do it but now if you look at this carefully you'll see the exact information that the 1004 mc and matrix has 
Thank you. And what's really good about that for you to know that is when you go to rebuttal an appraisal, this is a house in Homestead, pre-construction that I did as an appraisal, I don't know, two months ago, three months ago. That's long. <laughs> it was done for the VA. I redacted the address, so I'm not giving you any information that I can't. All these numbers are public information and my my numbers. Don't don't worry about all the mumbo jumbo technical stuff. What I want you to know is that I made uh, market condition adjustments, time adjustments on comp one, 41,000. Why? Because it went under contract, 822. I don't have the date of the appraisal here, but it was probably like six months old, the comp. Then on comp two was 523, only 9,000 adjustment because why? Because it was a more recent comp. More recent comp. I'm going to go a little bit slow just so you can understand this concept because this now takes you into defending um, and supporting the transaction, which is what you guys do. So if an appraiser didn't do this, he's negligent and you need to be able to catch it as a realtor so that you can then discuss it with the lender. What is the S on the C? S is... The S is sale. Is Closing, closed, closed. And, and C is contract. Oh. That's how they require it. It's not, don't blame me. They and, just, yeah. under con, under contract. So why do we make, here's a good question, because you guys are so smart. Why do we make time adjustments based on contract date and not closing date? The price was determined on what date? You could you could you could write a contract and not close for two years. The closing date is irrelevant. Got that? So now if I wouldn't have made these appropriate mandated needed adjustments, the bottom line would be a lot less, and maybe this property sales contract would not have gone through. I don't remember, honestly, if it was needed or not needed. But a lot of times when you meet an appraiser, if they don't do the proper adjustments, it could affect the bottom line. Am I making sense? Yes. So are you saying that there should be an adjustment plus or minus on there when reviewing the appraisal? Is that what I'm understanding? When you review an appraisal after today... You're leaving here. It is not a mere sentiment to tell you that your brain is different than when you got here. You will now, when you get an appraisal, you will look at the neighborhood. You will see if he made an adjustment and you can then do your own 1004 MC and say, hey, something's off. Or, yeah, he's right. He didn't make an adjustment because it's Weston and Weston didn't go up. Oh. You understand? So. This is a check and balance because remember, you you are an advocate for the transaction. So you want to make sure that everything is done correctly so that transaction is supported. And one of the things that you couldn't do before today and you can do now is you can verify what the market conditions are in this town. So somebody, some realtor with access to 1004MC could go in and check and make sure that my adjustments were correct. Quick question. No, Would you, um, as an appraiser, do you go back in time? If you don't have enough comps, do you prefer to go back in time versus going outside the neighborhood? So, excellent question. And every case is different, but generally speaking, I will I'm not going to weasel on that question. I'm going to give you an answer to that question. Location to me is more important than time. Because I can adjust, I can support a time adjustment more than I can support a, a location adjustment. Because, because what happens with a location adjustment is if I'm use if I if I don't have any comps in the same neighborhood, now we're getting into a deep appraisal, but I know, I know you can handle this. I know it. If you are 
doing research in a neighborhood and you see one price for a house and then you cross over I-75 and there's another price, what you need to determine 99% of the time, if both houses are the same, that means that the land value is different. Is different yeah. So the land value in Coral Gables is different than the land value in Miami yeah. Beach, is different than the land value in Plantation. Mm -hmm. Every lot has a value without the house. Mm -hmm. And you can do an extraction where you extract the house mm -hmm. and come up with the value of the land. That's an appraisal um, method. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me, yeah. I'm going to lose a couple of people here, but right. stay with me. If you, if, if you're, if the land value that Broward County says for your lot is a hundred thousand, that number doesn't mean anything. Right. But the percentage difference from the other lot. Okay. means something. Okay. So okay. if you have the Brown County saying 100000 and then you cross over the highway and it's 75000 for the land, now you can take that percentage, which is 25%, and say, okay, every house that's in Pembroke Pines, if the house sold for 500000 and the land is 25%, then you can then extract, not go by the number that the county gives you, but you can extract. Now that's not a super accurate way. It's more accurate to do the cost on the house, depreciate the cost. So I'm, I'm gonna, this is a bonus. This is super bonus round. This is a house costs a million dollars to build without the land. The house is 10 years old. So there are programs where you can determine the effective age or how much depreciation, like when your car depreciates, when it's brand, when it's brand new, it's worth X. And now four years later, it's worth less. So the same thing, when you depreciate that, you, 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 you look at the cost of the house new, the house is 10 years old, you remove that depreciation, and then you take that away from the price of the whole package and you're left with the land. It's a little bit, Technical. That's accurate for land value? Yeah. Very accurate. Interesting. And you don't do it on just one comp. You got to do like five, six comps, and they have to be similar to your house. And there's a lot that goes into it, guys. But basically, it's called the, de the depreciated cost. The cost depreciated. If it's a 30-year-old house, you got to depreciate 30 years. Now, what if it's a 30-year-old house? Raymond, this is a good question now. You ready? What if it's a 30-year-old house? Somebody bought it. They gutted it. And now it's all brand new. So the depreciation goes down for the house because the value comes in. So that was a good answer. But basically, you have to give the effective age of what it is today, not just the age. Yes. So if they haven't done anything to it and they have avocado appliances and shag carpet, then it's 30 years. But if they built it up, maybe maybe the effective is only 15 instead of 30. Guys, that's a, you know, I'm just like, I'm just wetting your appetite, but... Uh, I, 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 what I wanted you to know in these last slides, and then I'm done. What I wanted you to know in these last slides is that the 1004 MC is very valuable for buyers, for sellers, for you, and for appraisals so that you can monitor your transaction so that you can show up with the appraiser, not just give him comps, but be able to discuss with him on a very high level as to what's going on in the market which is up, down, it, it's always doing something. It's either stable, up, or down. There's, the, the answer is never, no, nothing's happening in the market. There's always something happening in the market. So um, did you guys like the class? Love yeah. It. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I, loved, I loved giving the class to you, so, you know, I really do. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know what? We did it in Coral Gables and we asked again for Broward. But will I ask again? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I make myself available for you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Are you happy you met George Jalil today? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Go out there and make your customers happy. Show them how smart you are. George.